What is the difference between a tangent line, a normal line, and a secant line? If you're currently taking calculus, perhaps you've heard of those three lines. What's the difference between the three? Well, let's talk about it. First, let's start with a graph. Let's increase the font size. So let's say we have a graph that looks something like that. A tangent line is going to touch the curve or the graph at one point. So this would be a tangent line. Now the secant line is a little bit different. The secant line touches the curve at two points. So let's say if we're focused on these two points and if we draw a line between them, that will be called a secant line. It touches the curve at two points. So that's the difference between a tangent line and a secant line. Now the normal line is similar to the tangent line in that it touches the curve at one point, but with a difference. And that difference is that the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. So they meet at a 90 degree angle and therefore the slopes are a bit different. The slope of the tangent line, let's assume it's in this example, positive three over four. The slope of the normal line is going to be the negative reciprocal of the slope of the tangent line. So if the slope of the tangent line is positive three over four, the slope of the normal line is negative four over three. Now, the way in which you would calculate the slope of the tangent line, you could find it by evaluating the first derivative at whatever point this is. So let's say if that point has an x value of a, it will be the evaluation of the derivative at point a. That'll give you the slope of the tangent line, which is the instantaneous rate of change of that curve at that point. Once you have the slope of the tangent line, you can easily find the slope of the normal line. Flip the fraction and change the sign. Now, if you want to calculate the slope of the secant line, you've done this in algebra. All you need is the two points, x1, y1, and x2 and y2, and you can calculate it. So the slope of the secant line is going to be the change in y, which is y2 minus y1, divided by the change in x, x2 minus x1. Now, the slope of the tangent line can be approximated by the slope of the secant line as the limit of the change in x goes to zero. In other words, let's say if we want to find the slope of the tangent line here, the instantaneous rate of change at that point, we could use the slope of the secant line to approximate it if these two points get closer and closer to this point. So those two points, let's say if we were to move them here, where they're very close to the point in the middle, the slope of that secant line is going to be a better approximation of the slope of the tangent line at that blue point. So you can use the slope of the secant line to approximate the slope of the tangent line if the change in x gets closer and closer to zero. And once you know the slope of the tangent line, you could find the slope of the normal line. So that's the basic difference between the three. So by the way, if you need to calculate the average rate of change, you're basically calculating the slope of the secant line. If you need to calculate the instantaneous rate of change, you're calculating the slope of the tangent line. Make sure you understand that difference. Now, for those of you who want example problems on how to do this, you could find it in YouTube. So if you go to the YouTube search bar and if you type in normal line equation, organic chemistry tutor, that video is going to show you how you can write the equation of the normal line.
if you type in tangent line equation organic chemistry tutor in the YouTube search bar the video that's going to come up is going to teach you how to calculate the equation of the tangent line and I also have one for the secant line as well so feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance